So let's start out here real nice and easy with New York rifle uh, and pistol versus Bruin. Actually, let me just ask you guys, what do you know about the case? Like before I go and read shit and I do the nerd stuff, like maybe go around Joe, Scott, Cannon, Ron, what have you just heard about the case? Well, it's it's a case like we experienced in Michigan long ago. It was a shall issue state, or I mean a may issue state, which mm -hmm. means you had to prove to the state your purpose for wanting a concealed pistol license. That's the way it used to be in Michigan. Uh, we had that go away a long time ago, but that's what this case hinges around. Yes. Scott, did you hear anything over there? Did it make it to you in uh, Piontech? Well, you know, I mean, being here in uh, Korea it makes it hard to buy guns and to carry guns and all that kind of stuff. So I, 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 will, I will freely admit that outside of my general interest, it doesn't have a huge direct impact on me. That said, I mean, you know, the, the real thing that I'm kind of keying in on is is the nationwide implications to, you know, conceal carry, uh, you know, because, you know, for a lot of us who come from free states, I mean, I'm from Kentucky, so we've had some pretty good gun laws there. <laughs> I know, uh, you know, uh, Joe's living behind enemy lines. I know for guys like Joe, this is a huge impact potentially. But then again, like we were talking about before the show started, uh, on the other hand, you know, dictators are always going to find a way to dictate. And so, uh, you know, that does just because the Supreme Court does something good doesn't mean it, there isn't a 18 month period of normalization before we we actually get that propagated out into the world. And Joe, we'll talk about you because Joe is outside of Detroit, correct? So, uh, so we'll yes, talk a little bit about enemy lines later because that that's a whole separate topic. Uh, and I think you got some good stories to share with my viewers. Uh, Cannon, what do you what did you hear about this decision? What what did you did you know about it at all? Yeah, so I was following it for um, ever since I heard of it. So, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, I think it was two gentlemen that uh, I guess they were basically as pissed that they couldn't. Uh, they couldn't get their concealed carry simply because they needed a good and substantial reason that they couldn't prove that they needed to carry a firearm. And I felt their pain because I live in Maryland, which is, you know, up until what, two days ago was a May issue state. Um, our governor two days ago just said that they're going to recognize the Supreme Court. Now, Maryland is a shout issue state and I'm excited. You know, however, I already have my concealed carry. So but the, the only way I could get my concealed carry is because my family owns a business. That's it. Mm. They asked for my bank statements. They wanted employee ID number, uh, uh, tax ID numbers. They wanted all of this stuff like I was going to work for the government. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I got to have a it was, it was a lot, you know, and um, to see this case come out, you know, in favor of the 2A, it was it was, you know, I don't think I've ever yelled that loud in a truck <laughs> when I seen <laughs> that come down, you know, and then I was just waiting, holding my breath for Maryland to see if Maryland was going to uh, uh recognize it or if they were going to do this nonsense that uh i'm sure we'll talk about with new york and california are trying to do and, and to, to fly in the face of this uh opinion yes yes exactly uh ron uh do you do you get stuff out there i mean did the boomer news reach it to you yeah yeah the pony express stops by once a week it's pretty it's pretty cool um yeah so in south dakota here you know we're constitutional carry so there's there's uh i mean there's none of this asinine restrictions on on our second amendment god-given rights and yeah I, I did follow it a little bit um actually i i read the uh, the best the best part of the opinion was uh alito's um uh, concurrent assent assenting opinion which he just shredded the uh um um what Bray Breyer or whatever mm -hmm. the other the dude who's retired now um yeah and right. the other people and their emotionalisms I, I thought that was that was like wow. It's like take him to the woodshed, spank him, and then take him back and spank him some more. It was great. Briar was like emotionalism and like mental illness or like incapacity like combined, well, right? You know, like that the, guy was not all together. The the thing Alito's been doing on multiple of these kind of concurrences or opinions has been. Not just taking them out back in the woodshed and, and beating them in the privacy of uh, of the humiliation of the individual getting beat, but he's doing it in public, uh, in writing, uh, for posterity. And I tell you, it's been really good to see people come out with a really strong defense of uh, of liberty uh, minded issues. And uh, Alito yeah. man has really been a surprise uh, to me, and I'm 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 pretty happy we got him. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think it was an important point that he made that, you know what, this is all emotional and it's all true and it's all very scary.
but that has absolutely no place in a decision of the Supreme Court. We don't yes. make decisions on the Constitution of the United States based upon emotion, right? Yep. And, and that was uh, that was the best part of Alito's concurrence. Yeah, we let Congress do that. <laughs> well, or not do that, which is the problem, right? Which in a, we're not. I mean, well, I guess we can mention it later. I'll talk way later. But I mean, that was the whole point of Dobbs, right? Was that the legislators aren't doing shit? The only reason why we had Roe in the first place was because the legislators wouldn't do anything. Right, because they're too scared to do anything. So the justice to the judges took it upon themselves to do something when they shouldn't have in the first place. Well, but, I was referring to that red flag uh, bill that Biden signed right before he he made his sleepy tour of Europe here a, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll get to that one. I will okay, definitely get to okay. that. So the the facts of this case, um, and these guys were all spot on, by the way, about it. I mean, so what they heard is accurate. Just to go over a little bit, a little bit more meat. Uh, so you had these two guys, Robert Nash and Brandon Kosh. Um, they lived in the state of New York, and the New York requires the showing of special need for self-protection to receive an unrestricted license to carry a concealed firearm outside the home. So they rejected that. They were rejected because they failed to show proper cause. So the district court dismissed their claim. So meaning the district court agreed with New York, the Court of Appeals affirmed that. So coming up, it was looking like they were. it was not in their favor, right? Two courts have, have thrown these guys out. The Supreme Court says, nah, we agree with these guys. And so the question was, is New York's law requiring applicants um, requiring applicants for unrestricted concealed carry demonstrate a special need violate the Second Amendment? Yes. The answer is yes. It does violate the Second Amendment. Um, and what it says right here is the right to carry a firearm in public for self-defense is deeply rooted in history. No other constitutional right requires a showing of special need to exercise it. That right there. It's like your freedom of speech, freedom of the press. You don't have to sh make a showing. You don't have to prove something to the government in order to exercise those rights. It goes back to shall not be infringed, right? There's no yes, caveat absolutely. on that. There's no, there's no, you know, clause. It's, it's like shall not be infringed. However, you know, no, there's none of that. Right. There are no more qualifiers, you know, and that's what it exactly. should be. You know, they said they were going they off, of, were going tradition off of tradition and, te and text. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it should be, you know, and, and I think that uh, Justice Thomas gave an amazing, you know, opinion. You know, he explained himself very well and he he broke down the Second Amendment and, and made it, you know, where it's, it's, it's indisputable now. And here's where this got big. And this is just two sentences. But the reasoning goes in further. This is a summary. But saying that while some sensitive place restrictions may be appropriate, not even saying that they are like might be. Might be Manhattan is not sensitive and saying that gun restrictions are constitutional only if there's a tradition of such regulation. So saying pretty much if you're coming up with some new, you know, inventive regulation, it's probably not constitutional, right. which is really strong for the Second Amendment. That's a huge win uh, to push back on uh, potentially overreaching uh, regulations. Then, of course, you heard about uh, Alito's concurrence. We talked about the effect of guns on American society being completely fucking irrelevant to the issue, which yes. is 100 percent facts. It has nothing to do. Whatever the politics or the trend du jour is, has nothing to do with the Constitution. Um, Kavanaugh and Roberts did come in and simp for some for some specific requirements, which I do not like. Fuck Roberts. But he he mentioned this background checks, firearms training mental health check records and uh, fingerprinting are permissible because they're objective. Um, but but um, I've got a point on that is that it, that's yeah, actually, yeah. that's actually ridiculous because when you do a background check on somebody in Michigan, thank you, thank you. it comes back stamped by the Michigan state police. that says, listen, the records are so horrible because not every agency sends them in. Don't rely on this. This doesn't mean anything. That's and, right. Uh, that's right. And, and, and that's a great point. Yeah, what, what do you guys think about some of these restrictions? I mean, I, I would like to just kind of spend so, a second so, to talk about these type of restrictions: background checks, firearm training, fingerprinting, and mental yeah. health. Yeah, if if I could jump in on this, I mean, I, yeah, a long time a, a long time ago, I was actually on the on the position of, oh, you know, the guns are pretty dangerous, and maybe maybe a license is not a you know a, a terrible thing or some sort of a like a test, you know, a, to, you know, and it quickly dawned on me that. The difference is, is that you don't have to have a license for speech and speech is way more dangerous in a, in a lot of ways than, uh, 
you know, the difference between a car or a truck or a, a tractor or any of this stuff is there's no right to own a car in the Constitution. You know, the, the right to keep and bear arms is expressly uh, written right into the Constitution. And in order to kind of put a barrier to rights uh, that's controlled by government, I think that's a dangerous uh, point that, uh, you know, I mean, e even things like the whole, you know, a felony, uh, you know, a felon after his uh, sentence is over, not being able to uh, kind of, you know, claw back all of his God given rights. I think that's a, that's you know, that's pretty damning. Um, I so, uh, so I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm definitely of the opinion. I think that, uh, you know, this is probably a popular one in this forum that, uh, you know, there should be no, uh, there should, you know, government shouldn't have a whole lot of business, uh, in, in this, uh, you know, it's all, there are only kind of extreme forms of, you know, breaking the social contract, you know, such as committing a felony or something like that, that would then kind of, disqualify you for a period of time and you know and that needs to in and, and the freezing of your rights for something like that needs to be you know th there needs to be due process and there needs to be a spelling out of like you know from this period of time to this period of time you will lose your rights to keep a bare arms you know because of the thing that you did right and this kind of gets to red flag laws a little bit too and i know we're not there yet but uh yeah but but um, i think that i think that they, it gets it gets towards that direction because when you talk yeah. about these requirements whether it's background checks firearm training mental health records fingerprinting especially with the training and the background checks and the mental health records those three i want to i want to spend a little bit of time on here well, because i, I don't have to have a background seen... check to exercise my fourth amendment or fifth amendment rights right that's exactly correct. exactly well, maybe and, you should <laughs> <laughs> I think Joe definitely yeah. needs a background check. I mean, Especially you know, in, I live in Edwards, South Dakota. There you go. Well, you know, I mean, the, 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 these these uh, these four items that you highlighted here, Andrew, is it's you know, yes, I'm a criminal. Please treat me like one, so I can exercise my God-given constitutional rights. Thank you. Yep. Right. Yeah. And you remember what happened in Sutherland Springs, right? That kid. You know, he he was able to get his 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 rifle because the uh, Air Force or, was, or the Navy didn't even uh, report his uh, his um, his dishonorable discharge and a domestic oh, that, dispute that he had with his wife. You know, well, that Texas uh, church shooter. Yeah, that yeah. was the Air yeah. Force. But yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Yep. And, and here's the thing. I, I saw those the bill. I forget which one. It was the crazy. Um, gosh, what's her name? The crazy Minnesota senator who just got booed out of the. Uh, just got booed out of a concert. Oh, I forget her name. Um, Ilhan Omar. Ilhan Omar. Thank you very much. Ilhan Omar's bill, I believe, um, required like a ridiculous number of amount of hours of training. I think it was like 120 or, or something <laughs> like that hours of training just to get like a basic license to operate a gun. Required a background check that was like FBI level and um, a uh, mental health check. But here's the thing on the mental health check. Uh, and I know this is a big problem for Ron. They if if they get everybody that that was related to you uh, has the opportunity to speak up, including, you know, every ex you have. So they've got to go to Kazakhstan and, you know, Cambodia to, to find some of those for, for oh, Ron. Um, and any of them can say, hey, I think this guy is a threat. And boom, you're you're right to have. a firearm. And they do that here in it Maryland, was... too. So with our with our when you go for your concealed carry uh, license here in Maryland, um, with a wear and carry license here in Maryland, you have to give references mm. you know they want three references not uh not related to you you know like i said it's like filling out for a job application that's, and that's they check like up on college. these people yeah it's like a college yeah and and, 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 and um they my dad <laughs> my dad had to give you know two of his ex-wives you know <laughs> you know but you know luckily he's in good good standing with him but he was like geez he's like what if it was a if, if it was what if these went wrong you know <laughs> yeah that's a little risky <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, it wasn't it wasn't Cambodia, it was Pattaya Beach, Thailand. But that's another story. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely Pakistan and that guy in the one photo looking at your butt, Ron. That's the guy that needs to talk to God, Jesus. <laughs> that redefining Jesus. operator, right? That was um, official business. <laughs> but, oh, I'm sure it was official business. <laughs> I'm gonna oh boy. That, that one's clipped. Uh, don't worry did, about it. Did, did this have anything to do with Chai Boys or anything like that? Just <laughs> go, go away, Scott. Just go away. Um, so, so, sorry, Ron. 
but it, it's the ability, the ability for somebody to be able to uh, assess you or especially a state official, right. Mm -hmm. To be able to assess you and say, no, based on our criteria, right. Which you can't review, which we can't set. We're going to say that you have this mental health issue, particularly when, and I've mentioned this, a lot of the masculine traits, right. Like aggressiveness, stoicism, um, competitiveness are now viewed mm -hmm. as problematic on the DSM. You know, when they can say, oh, oh they've, they've got these problematic traits, you know, they're just too stoic. You know, Joe's too stoic, can't give him the gun. You know, Cannon's too aggressive. I've seen his YouTube, I'm not going to give him a gun. I, I think that that is where I have a problem with him just saying carte blanche, that yeah. these are all permissible. That's where I have a problem with that. Um, and, and the fact that Kavanaugh joined in, I was a little bit disappointed on that. I, I was hoping that Kavanaugh would be a little bit better than that. But um, maybe Robert. He's a, he's a crybaby. <laughs> but you know I mean, this is interesting what what you the the point you just brought up andrew seriously is yeah. um we could we could also you know by by uh we could um extrapolation then go apply this to how do you how do you get on a no-fly list i mean mm -hmm. what what are the criteria nobody knows you know right. i mean is it is it because you know you attended a a Joe Dolio training seminar? Is it because you have the same name as Scott, who's a known right. international terrorist? I mean, <laughs> but yes. seriously, but I mean, I'm I'm, I'm oh, kidding. No. But this is this is an important. This is a question that that we've asked uh, when I asked a, a few times back when I was still in the in the business. Is how do you, uh, you know, what are the criteria for getting on this? And the DOJ people just looked at me like I had a dick grown out of my forehead. <laughs> Which I don't think I do, but but it was it was an, it was well. Sorry, I, I did that for the Marine in the audience, but I you know it's Thank but I, but it was an important question. Like, what are the criteria? I mean, how how do we know? I mean, you know, if I run into somebody who's I a bona fide dangerous person, um, how do I? you know, start the process to get them on there? Or was it some bureaucrat in some office in DC at Liberty Crossroads that suddenly says, nope, you know, Andrew Esquire. Yep. He's dangerous. Uh, uh X, you know, he's, he's no longer flying business class. He's a coach guy only. Oh no. Seppuku for me. I'm jumping, man. That's it. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true though. Like the standards, the standards aren't clear and they're certainly not set in the law. And what we've seen in a lot of cases is the administrative agencies will go out and set these standards to be very, very, very overbearing. Now there was the, the EPA decision, which did kind of claw back a little bit of the federal expansion of power. Right. But that's, we still have a strong deference towards the administrative agencies, including the fucking ATF. Uh, which uh, is is really, really, really problematic, which brings me to the second topic is, so I, I view that, I don't know if you guys would, but I would view, I think we're probably unanimous, that the Supreme Court decision is a win for the Second Amendment, right? But then we had, I believe Biden signed, did he just sign it like uh, maybe last week, I believe, the gun control bill? Um, right, right before he left for Europe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I think it was last week, right? Um, with, and, with the support of 29 Republicans, by the way. Oh, yes, yes. I, no, don't, don't, listen, I give it to the conservatives just as much. I actually had a Farron, uh, my good friend Farron on yesterday. We we're talking about Lindsey Graham's ladybugs. Uh, if you haven't ever looked up that story, just Google it. Uh, you um, know, Andrew, I, I actually, that's when I had to turn your show off yesterday um, because it's <laughs> getting ready for my show. But I'll be honest with you, I would have turned it off anyway. I was so disgusted, um, you know. I just well, uh, yep. it doesn't sound like anything I want to actually put in my search history. So <laughs> you've got incognito mode for a reason, Joe. Um, but Lindsey yes, Graham was the most effeminate Air Force Lieutenant Colonel JAG officer I ever met. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> it you, was like you didn't say JAG officer. You could have said JAG off. <laughs> well, uh, as, just... as shocking as the physical details of that uh, story were, the thing that I found actually more kind of you know, blew my hair back even more was the network of male escorts within Washington, D.C. And they have a, a, a chattering class. Yeah. But Scott, well, I mean, I guess it, it shouldn't surprise me, but, you know, it's sad. <laughs> 